Welcome to Real Estate Investing Abundance, the show for busy, fulfilled professionals like you to learn how to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. Now, here is your host, Dr. Alan Lomax. Hello, enlightened investors. I'm your host, Dr. Allen, and it is a pleasure to be with you today as we discuss with our guest how he, with only $3,000 gut-riching fear and absolutely no real estate experience, began to invest in raw land in 2002. Today, our guest, Mark Podolsky, uses his investment knowledge to help solve people's money and time problems. So, Mark, take us into the program by sharing with us a memorable experience from your formative years that helped you to be who you are today. Dr. Al Lomax, thanks so much for having me. So, a memory from my formative years is probably going to be the first time I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I was a miserable, micromanaged, 45-minute commute to work and back investment banker, specializing in mergers and acquisitions. And Alan, it got so bad for me. I wouldn't get the Sunday blues anticipating Monday coming around. Mm-hmm. I'd get the Friday blues anticipating the weekend <laughs> going by really fast and having yeah. to be back at work on Monday. Uh-huh. And so I remember reading that book and that sort of gave me the courage to quit my job and go into land investing full time. Well, I know that feeling. It's been a long time since I've had that uh, Sunday blues. And yes, I could also relate to the Friday blues because it was like that weekend is not going to last long enough. Not a fun place to be, and I'm glad you're out of that. Well, Mark, tell us uh, a little bit about land investment. We have lots and lots of guests talking about multifamily and other types of commercial real estate. But very few people have experience with raw land investment. So just kind of take us through what that is. Sure. So, Alan, let's use you as a case study. I'm going to walk you step by step through my model. All right. So so where do you live? I live in North Carolina, in Western North Carolina, in Appalachia. Okay. So you're in North Carolina. And I'm Mm -hmm. going to assume that you you own 10 acres of raw land in Texas, but you owe $200 in back taxes. So okay. essentially, you're advertising two important things to me. Number one, you have no emotional attachment to the raw land. You're in okay. North Carolina, properties in Texas. And number two, you're distressed financially in some weird way. Because we don't pay for things like our property taxes. We don't value them in the same way. As a result, the county treasurer keeps sending you notices saying, Dr. Allen, don't pay these taxes. You're going to lose your property to a tax lien or tax deed investor. So all I'm going to do is look at the comparable sales on your 10-acre parcel. I'm going to take the lowest comparable sale. I'm going to divide by four. And that's going to give me what Warren Buffett would call a 300% margin of safety. So I'm going to send you an actual offer on your 10-acre parcel. So for easy math, let's just say the lowest comparable sale is $10,000 on your 10-acre parcel. I'm going to send you an offer of $2,500. Now you accept it because for you, $2,500 is better than nothing. In reality, three to five percent of people accept my quote unquote top dollar offer, but you accept it. Now, once you've accepted it, I have to go through due diligence or this in depth research. I have to confirm you still own the property. I have to confirm back taxes are only $200. I have to make sure there's been no breaks in the chain of title. There's no liens or encumbrances. I want to know about access. I want to know what restrictions there are. So I have this whole big long checklist. And I outsource this to my team in the Philippines. I pay about $11 for due diligence because they're connected to an American title company. Now, if I was investing more than $5,000, I would close traditionally through a title company. But because it's only $2,500, I'm going to self-close. So I get the aerial maps, the plat maps, the satellite images, and I get this whole report back from my team. And I'm going to assume everything checks out. And now I'm going to own that property from you for $2,500. And I'm going to sell it 30 days or less and I'm going to make a cash flow like a rental home. So here's the question. I have a built-in best buyer. Do you know who it is? The built-in best buyer, I would suppose it is an adjacent neighbor. It would be my guess. You got it. It's the neighbors. Exactly. So I'm going to send out neighbor letters saying, here's your opportunity. 
protect your privacy, protect your views, know your neighbor. Oftentimes, the neighbors will buy. Now, if they pass, I'll go to my buyer's list. My buyer's list passes, I'll go to a little website you may have never heard of called Craigslist. 10th most trafficked website in the United States. <laughs> I'll go to what I'm pretty sure you've heard of called Meta or Facebook, buy sell groups, the marketplace. And then I'm going to go to the lands, landmoto.com, landandfarm.com, landsofamerica.com, landflip.com, landhub.com. These are all of these platforms where people buy and sell raw land. But what, how I'm going to sell it so fast is I'm going to make it irresistible. So the magic isn't in my pricing because all I'm going to ask for is a $2,500 down payment, and then I'll make it a car payment. Let's say three thirty nine a month and nine percent interest for the next eighty four months. So it's a one time sale. I get my money out on the down. I might go six to ten months out, and then I'm going to get three thirty nine a month over the next eighty four months and nine percent interest with no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents, and because I'm not dealing with a tenant, I'm exempt from Dodd Frank, RESPA, and the Safe Act, all this onerous real estate legislation. So it's a simple game that we play. Can we create enough of these land notes where our passive income exceeds our fixed expenses? And now we're working because we want to, not because we have to. Well, it sounds like a very interesting concept there. I'm sure like anything and everything, it is going to take some effort, some time and energy, certainly learning about that due diligence process, if nothing else, uh, then developing an understanding of how and where to go to the, the tax liens office. And that's probably going to be different in every state and maybe even differences from county to county within each state. So tell us a little bit about all of those intricacies. The intricacies of the actual buying and selling or the due diligence well, the first place I think probably anyone who is even going to consider doing this is, is how are they going to find these properties? So that would mean, how are they going to work with the tax lien departments and, and what are the differences from state to state and county to county? Right. So to get all that county information, we're going to go to one website called naco.org, N-A-C-O.org. And that's going to give us all the county information for all 3,007 U.S. counties. So there's 3,007 U.S. counties. So where do we start? Well, let's just face it, right? Nobody wakes up and thinks to themselves, boy, I'd like some raw land in Minnesota today, unless you live in Minnesota. So we're going to focus on the Southwest, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, California, maybe a little bit in the Northwest, Oregon, Washington, and then we'll check out Florida as well. So we want to be in the Sunshine States fast growing states and there's a just an abundance of raw land in those areas. So that's where we want to start. And then with the way we're going to get a list of owners is we're going to go to the assessor's office and again this is all public information. And so once we get that list, we're going to go and scrub that list. So we could scrub it by use code. Let's say VL for vacant land. And now we've all the vacant land owners. Then we're going to do one more scrub because I want to sort it by assessor's parcel number. Because if I send somebody an offer with 40 acres, the same offer as somebody with five acres, that 40 acre person is going to send me back glitter in the mail. So we want to make sure we price the list correctly by neighborhood and acreage. Mm -hmm. So once we do that, then we can send out our offers and we're going to automate that with software. We'll be right back after a brief announcement. Are you a busy professional, passionate about the work of your calling, yet realize that even though you love what you are doing, you're exchanging your time for money? You know that if you were to lose the ability to exchange time for money, your financial well-being will be in jeopardy. If you can relate, I have great news. Steve Tucker Capital is an investment company designed for professionals to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. Remove the anxiety of an uncertain financial future and go to steedtalker.com. Get your free one-page 10-step guide to passive real estate investing. So how do you do your comparables? So that's all public information. We're going to contact the assessor as well and look at the comparable sales on that acreage amount for the last 12 to 18 months. Take the lowest comparable sale, divide by four. We'll put that into our pricing matrix and send out an offer. So it sounds great, but what are the major benefits of a raw land investment? The major benefit is number one, 
there's nothing to maintain. There's nothing to protect. So think of a house, right? Um, if you're a landlord, if you're listening to this, you're a landlord, you're probably shaking your head right now. Boy, that, that'd be really nice to not have anybody calling you at three in the morning saying my roof is leaking. So there's nothing to maintain, nothing to protect. It's literally the only thing that lasts forever. So it's a legacy investment as well. Plus it's scalable. So you can travel around the world and run your land business. You don't have to be in a certain geographical area. I've done this over 6,000 times. I can't tell you the last time I looked at a piece of raw land because we're outsourcing it and having you know either virtual assistants help with our due diligence. If it's a new area, I'll put out a $50 Craigslist gig and have somebody stop on the property, give me their GPS coordinates, make sure they're in the right place, shoot video, take pictures, tell me what, what are the neighbors doing, what's the road like, how far from the nearest Walmart, how far from the nearest services. So all that can be done and scalable. So all I really need is an internet connection, an inexpensive computer, and I can run this business from anywhere in the world. How do you find your on-the-ground support? So on-the-ground support is just a local Craigslist gig, 50 bucks. People want 50 bucks, okay. they'll go out and do it. So you just put an ad in, in Craigslist and get offers from that. So one of the reasons that people invest in real estate is because of the tax benefits which largely come from depreciation. There's other benefits, but largely the biggest benefit for real estate investors is depreciation. That doesn't come with land. So what are their tax advantages for investing in land and what are they? So the only tax advantage, because you don't get depreciation with, with raw land, is if you use a self-directed vehicle. So either, either a Roth, so that grows tax-free, or a SEP, which would grow tax deferred. And that's really the only way to mitigate to the tax liability. Of, of, yeah. of tax benefits. Well, without the tax benefits, what are the benefits of investing in raw land? Well, you've got an inefficient market. So nobody really understands or knows the, the value of the raw land. So the biggest benefit is that in this inefficient market, we're averaging a 300 to 1,000% return on our investment. The other benefit is it's boring, right? You're not going to go HGTV or the DIY network and see flip uh, this land. Yeah. The before picture is raw land. The after picture is raw land. So if you go to a real RIA meeting, a real estate investment association meeting, 100 people in the room, 99 of them will be landlords, house flippers, and wholesalers. You and I will be the only land guys. So you've got this massive market, no competition. There's no big money in the, in the game. There's no private equity groups or hedge funds. So I'd say it's, it is the best passive income model. Yeah, and you're really not, uh, and from what you're telling us, you're not really putting any of your cash or your money into it. Initially, you're going to put in 2,500 or whatever, but right. you get that so you back within yeah. 30 days, essentially. So Yeah, so you don't have to even get private money. You have to go to a bank, which you know would eat into your margin because of the interest. Mm -hmm. So Certainly. there's a low, yeah. you know, it's a real easy entry point to get into this business as well. And it's, it's a real easy entry point and it's easily going to be scalable because you're not, you're not eating up your capital in doing this. And so you could immediately turn around and do a second one within the, the next month. If only, if you only have $2,500, that is that $2,500 is going to, of course, grow substantially as those interest payments start coming in. So the interest payments, in terms of taxes, you're going to, you generally are going to go 18 months or so. Is that what you were saying on that? So, so it is, so it's going to be a long-term investment. Is that correct? So for capital gains tax, it's long-term rather than short-term? No, it depends on, on how you do it. So it's typically going to be ordinary income because we're only holding this property 30 days or less. Hmm. Now, if you hold it a year and a day, yeah, you can make the argument it's capital gains. You have to have a full-time job, number one. So this has to be a complete investment. But somebody like me that's doing this full-time, hmm. it's all ordinary income. It's ordinary income. Okay. And so you're taxed then at, at ordinary income rates. So you talk about three levers of wealth 
in conjunction with land investment. So take us through that. So the, the first lever of wealth is other people's time. So we want to, the last thing we want to do is create another job for ourselves. So that first lever, lever is going to be vir- inexpensive virtual assistance, whether it's in the Philippines or Jamaica, there's never been a better time ever to be an entrepreneur and access global capital. So your first lever is other people's time. And let's face it, we can always make more money, but we can't make more time. The second lever is going to be software. So whatever we can automate is going to make and help with our processes. So on the front end, we use a a program called lgpass.com that literally takes this from uh, sending out the offers all the way to doing our contracts. And what used to take 20 minutes in paperwork now takes literally one second to do. Again, going back to, I can always make more money. I can't get more time. On the back end of that is managing those notes. So once you're managing five, 10 notes, you don't want to do it off an Excel spreadsheet. So we use a program called geekpay.io. It's a set and forget it system that will collect your down payment and then automate the monthly recurring payments via ACH. So you're not splitting those fees with the credit card company as well. And then your borrower can log in. They can make a prepayment. It always, it's, you know, it's always nice to have to avoid that phone call. Hey, what's my current balance? Or can I make a prepayment this month? Again, getting back to the fact that you can always make more money. We can't get more time. And then speaking of money, that third lever is going to be other people's money, OPM. And that's going to help us really scale. So the magic formula of scaling is other people's time, software, and other people's money. Well, all that sounds uh, all that sounds very attractive, and certainly those three different levers of wealth building certainly does make sense there. So, what is the major drawback? So, the major drawback to land investing is going to be the fact that there's no tax, no tax benefit benefits. Yeah. That's that's number one. I think the other one that people can get in trouble with is if they don't do their due diligence correctly. So let's say that I'm buying in Pennsylvania or Ohio or New Jersey. If I buy in what they call a super fund site, that could be literally millions of dollars of liability that I am now mm-hmm. going to be responsible for. So we recommend that you go to epa.gov to make sure you're not buying in a super fund site. But again, if you, if you use my model, you're going to avoid those areas anyways. I've never heard of that concept of super fund site. What is that? That's where a manufacturing company has polluted the land and oh, okay. there needs to be a, a cleanup. I see. Okay. So that actually, it wouldn't necessarily just have to be a manufacturing plant. We've had a lot of apple orchards in our area where that issue has arisen because of all of the toxic chemicals that they use over the years to spray apples. So it, yeah. uh, it could be various different things, not just manufacturing sites there. So tell us, Mark, how it is that people can get in touch with you and what is it that, that you have to offer individuals? Yeah, I think, I think the best place to go is thelandgeek.com. And if they want to learn more, they can get a free course at thelandgeek.com, thelandgeek.com forward slash quick deals. And we'll teach you how to double your money 30 days or less and see if this model even resonates with you. Alrighty, so that's thelandgeek.com. And Mark's email address is mark at thelandgeek.com. And of course, this information will be in our show notes as well. Well, Mark, it has been a pleasure having you on our show today. I just have one last question for you. And that is, what was one of the most difficult setbacks that you've experienced in life? And how did you come through that time? And what did you learn from that experience? So I talk about this in my book, Dirt Rich. So in 2010, you know, we all remember what happened in 2008, but I really didn't get hit until 2010. And I had what you would call Parkinson's law of money, which means the more money I made, the more money I spent. So I had a big house. I had three kids, no public school, private school. Mm-hmm. My wife didn't work and I still had a full-time nanny. We had a full-time housekeeper. I had this sort of feeling of like never being enough. And then in 2010, once I was forced to start cutting back, I got that huge ego kick to the head. And, and it was a, you know, at the time it was no fun, but it was a blessing to see that, oh my gosh, all of this stuff 
really doesn't make me happy at all. Mm -hmm. And so the way I kind of came out of that was just the realization that there's really nothing out there that's going to make me happy. It's sort of an internal game that you have to play. And once you start playing that game, really what happens, you know, whether I get to close a deal, I don't close a deal really doesn't affect my peace of mind or, or my life at all. And it just becomes a, a way more fun game and not being attached to quote unquote conventional success. So I no longer have Parkinson's law of money. So now I'm responsible and I learned how to, how to put money away and I use a profit first model to manage my cash flow. And so I'm really prepared for the next inevitable you know, recession and, and how to handle that. Well, that is our show for today, Mark. So thanks so much for being with us. Thanks, Dr. Allen. Appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to Real Estate Investing Abundance, brought to you by Steed Talker Capital, a company working for passionate professionals like you to develop financial independence built on solid, passive real estate investments. As part of our efforts to make the world a better place, Steed Talker Capital contributes to activities and organizations committed to better understand the equine. These endeavors attempt to enhance the human treatment of horses worldwide. Steed Talker Capital, working for a world where all creatures, great and small, flourish abundantly. For resources to develop your financial independence, connect with us at steedtalker.com. 